We need to consult, uh, first of all, the member state governments, the European Parliament, but I have to say also uh, financial institutions, social partners, academia, because our rules are now uh, 10 years old and we pass through uh, rather different economic times and updating this rule is really a very relevant task. So we need to have a consensus to build a consensus and to deliver after the, this public consultation. Now, I understand that one of your objectives here when it comes to this review is reducing complexity, that uh, certainly the public it has an issue when it comes to understanding what's actually taking place in Brussels due to the complexity of the current governance framework. But when so much fiscal policy depends on individual national governments, how much simpler can the structure actually become? Well, we have fundamental rules that are shared uh, at EU level, uh, we have our debt and deficit threshold that are common to all member states, and we have a surveillance coordination among member states. What is the challenge we have ahead now for the next uh, months and years? The challenge is to uh, promote a, a more active fiscal policy uh, towards growth. Because the fact is that we had, after the deep crisis of 10 years ago, a period of five, six years of stable and rather high growth, but now growth is slowing down. And we can't leave uh, only to the European Central Bank and to monetary policy the task to relaunch and enhance growth. We need fiscal policies making possible the enormous amount of public investment needed uh, to uh, tackle the challenges that we have mostly on the green transition and on the digital transition. Let's pick up on one of the points there. You say that one of the major challenges for the Eurozone going forwards is promoting growth and to do that you need more fiscal expansion. I get that side of the equation, but the other side of the equation is making sure that Eurozone economies are on a sustainable finance path as well. How can you do that? How can you square the circle where 10 years on, a lot of these countries are extremely indebted, and starting with Italy with a debt to GDP ratio of 135%, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. But for sure, countries with very high debt should put this debt on a downward path. Uh, but at the end, uh, if we look to the overall picture of the European Union, the average debt of the Union is below uh, 80 percent, which is very low compar in comparison with other global uh, economic players like the US or Japan. So. Uh, we have to continue the effort in specific member states. We have also to avoid uh, too high surpluses in other member states. But overall, uh, it is, I think, doable to preserve our economic and financial stability that we reached in the years uh, until now. What is key is the challenge to couple this financial stability with a stronger growth and investment. We have a, such an ambitious plan of carbon neutrality in 2050. If we want to reach this ambitious goal, we need a stronger effort on, not only on private, but also on public investment. And this is what is at stake in the review of our economic rules in the next months. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.